Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to teach how to change the wall profile. Basically, it's trimming a section in specific situations. Like here, in this staircase. Then we will see how to make a wall opening, this kind of passage, between two rooms. So let's start. In this chapter we are going to talk about editing wall profiles. When we draw a wall on the project, it has a constant height. But let's look at this example where we have this staircase. I'm going to switch to the 3D view and suppose that I want to convert the wall in the shape I'm showing here. To edit a wall profile, it's easy. I double click when I highlight the wall, it switches to the sketch mode and now I can easily modify the wall as I like. For example, I can draw a diagonal line here, then use Trim Extends to Corner to erase the parts that I don't need. Then I click on the tick to confirm the changes. So this is how it works. However, I find a bit hard to edit a wall profile in a 3D view. So I recommend it to do it in a section view or in an elevation. In this example, I'm going to do it in a section. I go to the ground floor and then I'm going to insert a section, find the icon on the view tab, then I draw the line for the crop view. The area covered has to be the staircase, of course, so I click on these arrows to switch the direction and extend the area by dragging this grip to the left. So I cover everything. Finally, if I hover the section icon, it says Section 2. So I know it's this one. But let's change the name. For example, to Section Stairs. Now, I'm going to open the section. First, I'm going to extend the crop region to cover all the wall profiles. Now it's better. Then to facilitate, I temporarily hide these two walls from the section view. I select both, click on the glasses at the bottom and select hide element. Now if I double click on the wall, I can only see the profile of the stairs and it's also easier to detect the snap points here. Oh, at this moment my visual style is set as hidden lines. If I switch to wireframe, I can see also the stair rises if I need to use snap stair. In this case, as I don't need, the hidden line is fine for me. Let's modify the profile. With the line tool active, I'm going to draw a line along the slope until this point. Next, I'm going to move the diagonal line 0.3 meters up, click in this endpoint, go up now and type 0.3. Then I can easily draw a horizontal line here to connect to the wall, just to the wall face. And right next, a vertical line. And don't worry about the distance, we will set it now. Select the line, then as I want it to be 50 cm from the wall face, I have to change first the position of this grip and finally set the distance to 50 cm, 0.5 meters. Finally, readjust the position of this line and use trim to corner to erase the extra segments. So, the wall profile is ready. Don't forget to always confirm or cancel to exit the sketch mode. And in the 3D view, I can see how the wall looks like. Now, I want to show you a warning that may appear to you. Let's go back to the sketch mode. This time, I'm going to modify the wall again. I know, I am in the 3D view. But when it's easy, you can edit the wall profile without big concerns. I want to extend the line towards the wall. Delete these two lines. 
and then use Extend to Corner here. Then I click on the tick and I get this message. It says, the best way to control the top and the base is to modify the constraints. What do you think happened? The wall highest point is no longer at the former height. And on the properties, the top constraint, you can see that it's set to up to level first floor, which no longer matches. I change it to unconnected and click on apply. And you can see I won't have that problem anymore because I removed the constraint. Anyway, if I didn't change anything, it would still be fine. The thing is that it's common to edit some elements later in our projects, and if the things are not set in the best way, we may have problems in the future. Wall openings. In Revit, there is a tool available to make a wall opening. What I mean is a passage from two rooms without placing a door. Something like this. Notice also this wall is only one element. This is a very practical feature in Revit. Let's have a look at how it works. I'm going to click on the option Wall at the opening panel, Architecture tab. Then, the first step is selecting a wall to make the opening. Then we click on two points, which will define the opening section. OK, it's done as you can see. However, the dimensions have quite random values, but that's something we will edit just right away. To set the specific length on the opening, just click on the dimension and insert the one that you desire. But you can see it's not enough, as the distances from the wall still have these complex values. How can we place the wall opening at the middle of a room? There is a simple trick for that. In these grips, we can extend or reduce the size of the opening. I click in this one once, and now this length is 0.9. Then I go to the grip at the other side, and I click until I match the first value. Now that they are equal, if I change the length of the opening, the distances at the side readjust to keep this section staying in the middle. I can change again to 1.7 and it still stays in the center. Now let's select the opening section and switch to a 3D view. Here you can see it, here you can see it in this perspective. Grips are shown to change the opening size, but I want you to focus on the properties, as they are a bit different than for the walls. The range between top and base constraints are defined by levels. Even we can set the top constraint as unconnected and set a specific value for the height. If the top constraint is at the first floor, we can modify the top offset of the wall. It's a negative value, because it's going down from the top constraint. Now be careful. If I edit this dimension on the project, what actually happens is that the opening height didn't change, it just moved a bit down from the base. That's why now we have a base offset negative. It's not really noticeable, because it's just a bit up than zero. I show you an example here, which we can better see these kind of situations. Due to that, the best is to modify the offset distances at the properties. If I set 0.5 and click on apply, the base offset stayed at 0 and the unconnected height has a precise value of 2.5 meters. So, it's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to Cadding Black to receive notifications of new updates. There are Revit and AutoCAD tutorials, but in the future, maybe you will find some more. Alright, keep in touch and see you next time.